Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to Android Programming Session. In my previous video, I've shown you how to install Android and how to create a simple Hello World application in Android. In today's session, I'll be talking about some of the jargons which are most or you can say fundamental blocks of an Android. Before knowing these all concepts, it is better not to start with Android because Android totally depends on these terms. It is true that you can do Android programming with the help of Java and C, that is native language concepts. But Android has came up with some of the new concepts or you can say new terms for mobile application developments. So before developing any application in Android, you should be very much aware about these terms. So in today's session, we'll be seeing what these all jargon words means and what they stands for. Secondly, we'll be seeing a simple application in which we will be calling one activity to another activity. That is a button click event will be there and how we can call an activity from one act another activity. We'll be seeing that also. So first and foremost, very fundamentally, the first term comes into Android is the activity. What is activity? If you are working with Android, everyone will say that for this application, you have to create five activities or you may have to create three activities. Activity is nothing but a simple screen. Okay, so in your application, if you are having five display screens to the user, then you have to create five activities. Activity is nothing but a simple class extending the activity class. Okay, so you create a class extended activity, then it becomes an activity. Activity is nothing but it is displaying a screen. So anything you want to display to a user with a user interface, then you have to create an activity. If your application is having 10 screens, that means simply you have to create 10 activities or 10 classes. What is service? Service is nothing but similar to activity, but very major difference is that it does not have a display screen. So what is the purpose of service? Service is used to run a code in the background. So if you want to have some code in the background to be running, without any UI code concept, then you should create a service instead of an activity. A very good example will be something like a media player application in which you want some application, your application to start in a normal app way. That is, you are having some XYZ application, but as and when this application starts, you want some particular music to be running at the background, then you can use the concept of service. It is true that some of the people will say that, hey, how it is possible, it is being possible with activity also. Yes, it is possible with activity if you're creating a media player application. If you're creating an XYZ application which does not have a media player but you just want to have a sound at the background, then you don't create with the help of activity, instead you create a service. So anything which is, have, which is not having a UI but is still have a code and you want it to run in the background, you go for service. Nothing similar like that, only activity, a class extending the service. We'll see the code and we'll understand that in more details, else it will be all messed up. Now the broadcast receiver. Now broadcast receiver is another new concept came up in the Android, okay? Or you can say in mobile developments. Broadcast receiver is something, a class, which will get a particular signal when particular action has performed. If you know SQL, then it will work something like a trigger. Okay, in trigger what happens, you register that thing that if this event happens, please inform me. If this thing happens, please inform me. The same is the concept of broadcast receiver. You create a class, you tell him to set it ideally uh, and tell the system or tell the application if sub something like this happens to you, please inform me, I will do the necessary actions to be there. Okay, so broadcast receiver is simple a class which is having set of codes, okay, in its on receive method that we'll see. Uh, which will be executed as and when that particular task has been executed or task has come up. Something like if suppose the system is completely boot up, please inform me. If Bluetooth is on, please inform me. If Wi-Fi is on, please inform me. If battery is low, please inform me. I have to do certain steps of actions to be taken. Then in that all cases, we create a broadcast receiver. Content provider. Very great concept. Uh, it is used um, much of the parts of the Android application. What content provider says it's a medium through which an XYZ application can share its database to you. Okay. Or a inbuilt application can share its database to an to a new application. For example, contacts is a feature of mobile. Okay. But internally contacts manages its data in its own database. 
but contacts has created content provider with the help of which it allows you to share its own database to the new application so if suppose you are creating an application and you want to access what the system's contacts or what the person's details are stored in the contacts database then to do that that contacts database is not your database it's a systems database used by contacts application so contacts application should first allow you to access it like if i want to access someone else anything uh, features or maybe mobile or maybe a laptop i take permission and if he allows me then only i can use it the same way it happens so contacts is an internal application it makes its database being shared to outside application with the help of content provider so with the help of content provider a person can share his application i mean share his database to xyz and using content provider the person who is in the front who want to use it he can use it also so content provider is used to share the application also content provider is also used to access the data from the shared database with content provider you can access your contacts with content provider from other application you can update the contacts database also if he allows you like if i want to make a call if i want to just browse the phone i'll just ask him can i browse the phone so he'll give it to me and i can browse it that is something accessing the data if you say i will say can i add a or can i make a call from this mobile or not then he if he allows me i can do that also can i delete some contacts from your contacts or not if he allows i can do it this all happens with the help of content provider in future i may be creating some of the videos on content provider i'll be explaining more on details on that also intent one of the powerful concepts of android intent is something like an event if you want to jump from one activity to another or if you want to send a message to one activity to another then you have to use an intent okay so it is a abstract description of operation to be performed okay that is how the google people says you want to launch an activity you launch a broadcast you want to launch a, a service anything you want to launch a browser or you want to launch particular uh, calling anything you want to do it is all done with the help of intent in intent actually there are two types one is implicit intent one is explicit intent explicit intent is the one when you call a particular activity that is we are very specifically telling i want to call this activity then you say it is an explicit intent implicit intent is suppose if you say i want to open this page this website okay so it can be opened in xyz application can be opened opened in n number of browsers so it is an implicit you are not specifying explicitly we'll see later on also that all more details else it will be on you know everything will be um, more so many jargon ones will be combined intent filter that's great now intent filter is quite confusing people used to confuse it with the intent also if most probably students someone ask you what is intent filter they generally give a definition of intent no it is not intent filter is a specification which we generally do in the manifest with the help of intent filter we are specifying that these are the capabilities of mine that is if you create an activity and you say this activity has this this features he can act as a main activity he can be in the launch pad and all the such things can be specified with the intent filter intent filter for any task it may be a uh, activity or anything is specified generally in manifest except one that is broadcast receiver for broadcast receiver you have an exceptional you can do specify intent filter in the application itself so i hope so i have covered most of the jargon words okay if you have any queries you can post to me let's see the second part of our application that is if you understand this activity let's create a simple application in which it is having two pages one is the default page with a button i click the button and it goes to the second activity or the second page so you see there are two screens so we need two activities let's see how we can create it i have already started it okay let's go to eclipse okay so here is my folder structure if you have seen my previous video i have explained all the folder structures and all and if you remember in the hello world application default one activity is created so you have only have to create one more activity because you need two screens one screen is by default created by the hello world application so here is my first screen i'll just show you resources it's a little bit slow i don't know why so this is an application okay it's a first page when i click on this button it will open my second activity 
so welcome to second activity so these are the two pages i hope so you understand that all my design concepts i'm doing in xml only and i'm then calling it in the activity files so these two pages have been created main.xml is by default created the second xml file i've created newly okay so i go to here okay i've changed it this thing i want to access the button so i create a local reference of it okay then i set set content view these lines are these all codes were there because it is by beam by default provided by hello world only so what changes i did i have to make access of that button which is there in the xml file in my activity so i have to make a local reference so i'm saying find view by id r dot id dot button one this button one is the id i have given to him okay so if you go here if you go to properties and if you go to ID and you can see it's a ID is of button one so I'm talking about that okay so I access that so I'm telling I want to access that particular button I'm saying set content I've set on click listener as this so it says okay fine then I have to implement on click listener and I have to override the method on click okay now here what is the task i have to create a second activity so i simply create it and second activity like right click new oops right click new and class and simply i've extended it only okay so simple create a class and just simply you extend activity and you override the on create method and set the content view as the second xml file which you want to display in this page okay so i want to jump into that activity how i do that is with the help of intent 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 is equal to new intent i'm creating an object it asks me the context so i'm passing this because activity is overriding the context so it's a child of it so indirectly i become a child of him so this is fine S which page i want to jump so i say second activity dot class so i say what you want to do intent is ready so i say start the activity of him okay so it will go and start that activity and it will run here and it will show the second page before you do anything further or you can just before you make a call you should make sure that thing the activity which you nearly created is being specified in the manifest because manifest is an index file as i have explained in the last video so anything you want to call it will come first in the manifest and check that there is there any second activity or not if it didn't find say an entry over here it won't call it so it is this is a mandatory step you can't skip this step okay so it comes here it finds second dot activity and then it goes the call to here okay let's see what i'm telling whether it's working or not so i run the android application and you can check it over here okay yes so you can check over here console so it's installing the apk file that is android package kit okay so so it's installing success starting the trying to start the activity so i check the emulator most probably it must be coming come on okay something is coming so the first page is by default here so i click here okay finally it is working okay so you can see that whatever i said it's working and you don't feel like that like it's not working it's working basically okay so uh, one more thing i want just want to point out here is the intent filter you can see that i'm saying this activity is having special caliber with the help of intent filter that it, it will be a main application and it will be in the launcher also that is what i was explaining with the help of in the jargons that what is intent filter and all those things so in today's session we have seen uh, what are the major uh, fundamental blocks of an android if you know these blocks you can then work any application in android i feel so like that secondly uh, we have seen an application in which we have created one more activity and we have called that activity from the first activity okay so if you have any queries regarding these things you can just post me or you can write comments if you like this video please subscribe it and post the comments okay thank you and have a nice day